Welcome to this week's video where I have Sara here with me. She's going to tell you guys why she was unable to sell her house. We talked about listing in last week's video. Eddie's not here today. We we're gonna do a nice house tour, but he decided that he wants to go back to Seattle, something about being with his family, whatever. Boring. <laughs> now it's one one, Eddie, and you're nowhere to be seen. But let's talk about, basically we planned everything out. We had it all sorted. Last minute, vendors, everything. Thursday night, Twilight Open party. But before we even got there, like true fashion, taking on more than we can possibly deal with, I secured a walkthrough of another property that we could potentially buy. It's another off-market that we have acquired, and I say that in quotes because we haven't seen it, we haven't gotten the price, we haven't given it to them, we haven't finalized the deal, but that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tour the property. But as always, Eddie is late, but right now, we're gonna get into that house and see what's going on. So right after that, unfortunately, the home seller said that they didn't want any videos or photos or anything taken of the property, which is perfectly fine. So we cut it right there. We're still in talks, so we don't know what's gonna go on with that property, but we'll see. We're gonna get it. Sara's team has actually been working on that property as well, interestingly enough. So now we're both working on it to try to acquire that property, and uh, it's just a matter of time, you know? Knock on wood. But we did that. I was there at like four o'clock, and we had the party at six. I think Sara got here at four. Mm -hmm. What did we do that day? What did we have in store for all of our guests? We had a twilight open house. It was super fun. It was from seven to nine at night. We had a beautiful spread of charcuterie and then we paired it with champagne. Sam, as you know, is very extra. So he went and got Vouv Clicquot champagne cart. We only provide the best champagne for our guests. Yeah, it was very pinky in the air. I just like the whole champagne charcuterie and what was the other C? And Chernoff team. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was trying to get a third C in there, but th there it is. There it is. Uh, so we had that, we had that beautiful display. I want to thank Mossy's from Crystal Bartenders. They did an amazing job. They did way over board on that. I was not expecting all of that. Turned out amazing. We also had like the amazing charcuterie board on the kitchen island. It was a great way of displaying both how large the kitchen island was and how this space could be used to entertain. I also want to thank MA Flora Design, which is a company owned by my fiance's mother. They provided us with this beautiful bouquet with crystals. The crystals mean this stuff over here. I don't know what it is, but there was a bunch of crystals that were basically for wealth, prosperity, health, all, all these fun things. My fiance and I think you know a lot about that too. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about the crystals. I'm wearing one on my <laughs> neck. Once we got all that in, I was stressed out, sweating like a maniac. Eddie was running late because he had landed that day. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys what happened with Eddie at the airport. So I go to pick up Eddie from the airport, Burbank Airport, which is very nearby to here. And he goes, uh, yeah, we're told that there is another plane at our gate and they ran out of fuel. And I was on the phone with Sara during that time. And Sara's like, yeah, they're going to be there for a while. And I was like, oh, great. This is exactly what we needed. But basically, we got here. We enjoyed our night. There was a lot of people people that came through, did we get potential buyers that night? We did get potential buyers who ended up- Did we get an offer from that night? Mm -hmm. No, from the daytime of that day though. We're not gonna go too much into the offers right now and who made what offer because it is a little bit of an on-moving process. Unfortunately, I wish we could have closed escrow in three days and I could have told you guys everything, but we're trying to get there. But one of the couples were here that night. Oh yes, their parents. The couple's parents were here that night. Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the couple. So, well, that just goes to show that these events do produce. To be honest with you, when I was talking to a lot of other agencies and a lot of other realtors and developers and, and people are like, these parties don't do anything. They're just for fun. They don't accomplish anything. And to the contrary, I think that they did. Well, the case. thing is, we also marketed it simultaneously as an open house to the public. We didn't just invite brokers and friends. We actually put it on the MLS as an open house. So that gave buyers the opportunity to see on Redfin, Zillow, whatever, that we were open that night. We had a lot of fans come through. Not that we have that many fans, but uh, a couple of you guys came through, so that was amazing. We had a couple come through later during the other open houses. I got a gift from one of you guys. I want to thank you. You guys do not have to do this, but I do appreciate it. It goes a long way. It's a little gift box. A drink thermos. Oh wow, this is like, oh, this is my favorite material. <laughs> we have some cologne. He got me a G-Wagon. <laughs> my second G-Wagon, I highly appreciate it. 
So we did that that night. It was an amazing night, amazing turnout. I was really, really happy about it. We cleaned up and then we came in Friday for our broker's open. So we had a broker open that very next day from 11 to 2. We marketed that to brokers, but also to the public. So we had a good mix of direct buyers as well as brokers coming in. Again, some fans of Sam and Eddie too. It's crazy to, to think that like with our three, 400 followers and whatever, 100, 200 subscribers, we have people that are willing to drive out and see us. So I, yeah. I, I appreciate that from you guys. And I appreciate you guys coming and seeing the product because it made me very happy to hear, oh, this looks so much better in person. Like that was like the biggest compliment. I was like, all right, so I should fire my videographer and editor for not doing a good job. Or should I thank myself for doing a really good job? He's rolling his eyes. <laughs> so we had that, we had this Saturday and Sunday open house. So we banged it out. We listed the house on Wednesday. The very next day we did the Twilight Broker open. Then the day after that we did a Friday Broker open and we also had a coffee cart which was super fun. And then Saturday, Sunday we did public open house. That was four days. Four days in a row. And honestly, these events were very well marketed outside of just purely the MLS and Redfin and Zillow and stuff because we did get a very large turnout, especially now with interest rates where they are and the market kind of plateauing and softening up a little bit. Sara got us into multiple offers. Yeah. So we're very, very happy with that. I think we also had some stragglers that are gonna jump back into the mix uh, after the first round of offers because we did counter all of them. And I really wanna get into the numbers, but Sara said she'd uh, off me if I did. I can't say anything. So unfortunately we cannot talk about anything, but what I can say is that we're over asking. Yeah, maybe. We're over, I'm not, I never lied Sam's to you guys. Sam's happy. I'm not happy, I asked you. I, you guys saw it, I asked her, three million over asking, she's not even close. We wanna thank them and we'll thank them more once they sell this house for three million dollars over asking. But the whole event was very successful the whole weekend. The, everything and the marketing behind it, all of this was very worthwhile and I'm, I'm more happy now that I went with them before we've even gotten into escrow than I was in the beginning of all this. And I just can't say, enough good things about you and your team and, and everyone, specifically Dennis as well. I don't wanna leave him out. He gave us a bunch of free artificial grass. The man. He is, he, he's done a lot for us. So one of the things that I was picking up with Sarah, obviously like being as intrusive as I am, I was here during the open houses being annoying, but I picked up a lot of things from Sarah and her expertise and which kind of goes to show why you want someone that has the experience on your on your team and on your on your sidelines basically is because we had like five or six people coming in, in here at once. Unfortunately, we didn't film much of that because of people's privacy and I don't think people want cameras in their face. But when you have a big group of people coming in, how do you figure out who to dedicate your attention to? You really can't look at a person and be like, oh, they're a buyer. You really never know. People all look different. There's all kinds of walks of life out there. So I make it a point to talk to every single person that's in that open house. And I try to keep the conversation light, but straight to the point so I can figure out what's really going on with them. Are they looking for themselves? Have they just started their search? Are they ready to go right now? Are they admiring your work simply? Things like that. You just have to be really quick and straight to the point. So one of the things that I, I picked up on that you didn't really mention is being direct and to the point, but phrasing your questions in a way that doesn't seem intrusive and like aggressive. So one of the things, I don't remember what it was, but basically asking people what brings them in. And that's the best way. It doesn't seem aggressive. It doesn't seem like you're attacking someone. It's people that are here to just look, they don't feel repulsed by it. And you're able to navigate. So if four people walk in simultaneously at the same time and hey, what brings you guys in? It's a two second, oh, we're just looking, we're the neighbors. Oh, well have a fun time, look around. What brings you guys in? And then you can kind of figure out who, not necessarily that needs more of your attention, but that's what it comes down to. As an agent, her responsibility is to sell this house to showcase it and she needs to focus on potential buyers and not saying that she was rude. I, there was a point where she spent like 30, 40 minutes with a couple that was just a neighbor. There was no one else in here just showing them around the house, the work that we did, the, talking about the Chernoff team and all, and all that. So it's just figuring out and using your time wisely. The other thing is social media. You guys went ham on social media. Oh my gosh. We are so good at our marketing. Well, we have a whole team behind us, right? We have a marketing person, social media. We have a system. She's lying. They don't have a marketing person. They have marketing persons. Persons. We have multiple <laughs> people. So the turnoff team, we're very hands-on with our marketing. Not only the turnoff team, but the agency too. Just as a brokerage itself, we're so known for our marketing and our really creative ideas. We're so different than everyone else out there. We're very natural and fun. 
Do you know what I will tell you guys is I had like a lineup of expectations of things that I wanted to ask for in terms of like, get these people to do something, get these people to collab with us, get this, get this, get this. But before we even got to that stage, Sara's team already got us on like a couple and like the influx of action was so much that after the dust settled, I was like, we didn't even have time to reach out to those groups of people that I had thought about. And like, there wasn't even the opportunity. There was, there was a bunch of Instagram pages, influencers and stuff posting us, talking about the house, pushing it on multiple different avenues. And that made a big difference. Just our page went up like 200 followers or something like that, which is crazy for us. I mean, maybe for some of you guys out there that have like 10,000 followers or whatnot, it's not that big of a deal. But for us, the 200 followers is a very big deal. And we appreciate every single one of you. You guys had property grams, I believe, post a reel with us. Yeah, property grams. You touring and that the property. that went super viral. We'll post that right here. I think it was like 150K yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's crazy. Yeah, I know for awesome. some of you guys, it's like whatever, but whatever, man, we all start somewhere. Yeah, we have a great relationship with property grams as well as other Instagram houseworthy accounts. And so anytime we reach out to them, we already have that relationship. So it makes it all the more easy to be able to get. I actually reached out to property grams before we even listed and they just told me no. And then like, I literally look and like they've posted something and collab posted with us. And I was like, wait, wait, when did, that, when, when did this happen? And so I was like, oh yeah, my team already reached out to them. I was like, okay, cool, wait a minute. Like I wasn't ready for this. But not only that, we also had Darren come out and tour yeah. the house. Just, we had so many different kinds of marketing going around that it hit so many different people. Yeah, and I appreciate the influx of people. I know Darren featured us in his channel and that also brought us a lot of subscribers and welcome to the new followers and subscribers on our channel. And make sure that you guys do subscribe and hit that notification bell because in about a week or two, once we finally get close of escrow, I can't wait to lay out the numbers here for you and let you guys know how much we actually spent, how much everything costs, how crazy Sara's commissions are, like 12, 13% or something like that. Gosh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> But yeah, kind of give you guys a layout of the whole map of everything that took place and how much everything costs and how much we ended up making after like 18 months. Six months of waiting and 12 months of like blood, sweat and tears. It's crazy. The next one will be much quicker now that yes. you guys have all the experience we, we under your belt. We have a lot of experience. Eddie's gonna get mad at me for saying this, but we're planning on buying four properties by the end of the year. So that way we could start snowballing into a bigger company and a bigger organization and be working on multiple properties at the same time. So that'll be interesting if you guys wanna stay in tune for that. Let me tell you what Sara does, which I kind of appreciate. She's like, you guys, we need to set a deadline for Tuesday, 10 a.m. And me and Eddie just like ignore that text and we're like talking like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I come to the open house the next day, like we haven't really decided anything. And everyone that walks in, Sarah's like, we have a deadline, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. And it worked. So. <laughs> Sometimes it gets to that point when you list a house, you never really know truly how the activity is going to be. So we listed it. And even before we listed it, I got an off-market offer. So that was great. But then I got another offer and I'm like, okay, we have two offers now. An hour after hitting the MLS, we got another offer. And this was before I even had all these open houses. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely gonna receive a great amount of activity. I need to set an offer deadline. So that's what I did, Tuesday, 10 a.m. The problem that I had with that is I came to find out when you set a deadline, everybody waits till the deadline to submit their offers. So then we were only sitting on two offers, which I mean, it's still amazing, but you know, you always want more. That's something that me and I do, like we always want more, 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 more. And she's like, yeah, all these people are just gonna show up at the very last minute and submit their offers. And then we're gonna have to take it from there and see if there's one that you guys are like, we're going with it, or if we need a counter and see where we're at. And uh, that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, so we received a good amount of offers. You know, when you receive a lot of offers, offers in hand, you kind of need to really weed through them and see how qualified these people are. They might be saying something, but you really don't know if they're going to follow through. In today's market, things are still very hot, but there's a high rate of cancellations and price decreases for home. So I do not want that to happen to Sam and Eddie. I Even want to before we started shooting this, she, she got a phone call back from one of the lenders for one of the buyers. So I have no idea that this was going on, honestly. And behind the scenes, she's been calling and vetting these people so that when we sit down to finally. Sorry. It's one of our offers. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the multiple offers. How we're weeding through them and making them work. So we have all of these multiple offers in. They might look really good and very appealing, have great terms, but I need to weed through them and really find out that they are qualified. So what I do is I call all of their lenders and really grill them and find out just how qualified they are, how comfortable they feel with like removing all of these terms, if they can really get the job done. And that really is 
a good thing to do when you're weeding through offers to find out who is good. One of the things that I learned through uh, my previous life of negotiating commercial contracts and leases is any contingency is the equivalent of a million contingencies. So if you have one contingency in place, it's the same if you had 10 or 15 or whatever contingency, it's all the same. The main contingency here is the inspection contingency, which is valid. Every homeowner buying out should get an inspection to make sure just because this looks nice on the outside doesn't mean that I did a good job on the inside. Now you guys have seen the channel and you've seen what we've done here. So you guys know that, but a potential buyer maybe hasn't watched the videos or doesn't care or wants a home inspector to check all that. And that's perfectly fine. But that also gives them a free out for seven days, 10 days, and I, and I think we want to do seven days for our inspection, but that's neither here nor there. They could use that. Their, their loan can come through, the appraisal can come through, everything can be fine and they can drive by the house and say, you know what? We noticed that the paint is chipping here. We're worried about more problems. We don't want the house. And they have the right to do that. They will not lose any of their earnest money. They will not lose anything. They'll just drag me through an escrow process, delay me, make me go back onto the market and create an array of problems. So you want to make sure that your real estate agent, or if you're selling your home on your own for sale by owner too, you vet these people not only from their financial standpoint of being able to buy the house, but also from the standpoint of do these people want the house? How bad do they want it? And will they perform? And Sarah has been doing a good job of doing the back end of can they perform on the front end too of saying, Hey, these are the people that are on the front line of will perform. And from there, we kind of have like a pyramid that goes down. Like these are less likely. These are, these guys are not going to perform no matter what. Like we had one offer, which fine, but they drove by the house and made an offer on the house. So maybe they're serious you never know but for me it doesn't make me feel comfortable that someone really wants the house if they just drove the street because the street doesn't tell you what's inside this house as you guys have seen that's it for this week's video thank you Sarah for joining me thank a great for replacement me. for Eddie not as hairy but <laughs> we'll do and thank you for listing our home and uh, she's gonna help us cross the finish line very shortly here maybe we'll see more of Sarah and her team once we're kind of done with the house so they can kind of go over this much more openly once all the dust is settled and all the information is public. We can kind of discuss it more openly. Yeah, we can talk a little Make bit. sure you guys subscribe. All the social media will be included down below. Sarah's information, Dennis's information, the day agency, the Chernoff team, all of that. Make sure to follow us, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.